Hello, welcome to Illuminate. We are here to discuss on confusion matrix, a very important topic and often confusing one because confusion matrix actually confuses us or we many a times do not make a proper decision on which side of confusion matrix weighs more for certain problem. So today, very clearly understand what a confusion matrix is and by the end you will be in a position to take in any problem and go into the depth of it and understand how to improve the performance or even know which parameter is important for me. Now let us have a quick introduction on what is confusion matrix and why is it important? Where does it come into play? So before confusion matrix, we should know what is a classification problem. By the term classification, we understand we have to classify things into either or. For example, we may say a candidate appearing on an exam may either pass or fail. So there are only two options. So Either there is a 50% chance of the candidate passing the exam or a 50% chance the candidate is failing the exam. So this becomes a classification problem. Think of any laboratory scan or test that we conduct. So what will be the result of the test? Either the test will be positive or the test result will be negative. So again this becomes a classification. Then maybe it's on something like a detection. A detection problem right you might be working with images video analytics anything so there is always a detection of maybe a, a human you might have seen in spy cameras and other things where we detect humans where we detect vehicle vehicles where we detect maybe animals all of this detection so this becomes a detection problem so in a detection problem it might be what is this now if we have detected it, we say, yeah, we have detected human. Yes. If not, no. So again, at the end, what are we doing? We might be processing a lot of images and we might be saying, yeah, there is an animal. And you might also be identifying it as cat, rat, bat, whatever. But at the end, it becomes uh, boils down to a classification problem. Is it a classified as a human? yes or no is it classified as an animal yes or no is it classified as a vehicle yes or no so any of these kind of things comes into the domain of classification problem so this is what is the basic introduction and this is where we actually take in the confusion matrix and this confusion matrix tells us what is important for us what is that we have to improve upon so that our results are much better that is how it becomes super important now let's move on to the confusion matrix and learn the nuances of confusion matrix and get into it so our primary goal here is to understand what is confusion matrix use the confusion matrix to its best possible and then improve upon whatever we have learned. Okay, so let's start with confusion matrix and let's take a basic example first and then we'll go to two actual use cases which will demonstrate how and what parameter of confusion matrix is important and how do we arrive at those kind of thoughts. So let's first draw a basic confusion matrix to understand and to kickstart our journey here. So just a square matrix. I'm just drawing a square matrix of two cross two. I'm drawing two to make you uh, familiar on the terminologies and the way we kind of write it. So let me put uh, the predicted ones on the left hand side here. So predict is what we create a model or we learn from the environment and we say we predict uh, by seeing the cloud we say it's going to rain or it's not going to rain yes or no that is our prediction but 
से आफ्टर हाफ एन आवर द रेन डजेंट कम दैट मीन्स आर प्रडिक्शन वॉज रॉन्ग राइट सो दैट इज वॉट इज अ प्रिडिक्शन पार्ट ऑफ इट एंड हियर इज एक्चुअल पार्ट वॉट हैपन एक्चुअली इन द नेक्स्ट वन वी जस्ट स्विच इट सो इफ यू लर्न दिस वे और इफ इफ यू आर क्लियर विद द काइंड ऑफ एक्सप्लेनेशन दैट आई एम प्रोवाइडिंग हियर देन any type of confusion matrix or whatever you you can be uh, on top of the uh, problem solving skill in this so here i'll put predict on the top it's all same some refer like this and on the horizontal i put uh, actual i'm just switching between the axes okay so here we're not taking any specific example say for example let's discuss on the rain itself right so meteorological department says uh it's going to rain is their forecast so we are discussing on rain so what is rain rain is what is uh positive for us right if we identify if we say that it's going to rain that's positive for us and if we say it correctly then it's really good for us that yeah uh i can take a number la I, i should not carry a number la whatever i can decide on based on that right based on the uh, forecast so so the rain is super important for us so rain is the positive thing for us okay. so you can create your own positive your own negative whatever one one aspect of it either you decide this is positive for me or this is negative for me uh, opposite of it is negative for you so here i am just putting rain as positive for me now this is say now positive and negative similarly uh, i am putting common for these two tables positive negative here and again positive negative okay let me switch the color over here let me take the green now it's focus now let's understand see this is positive positive means rain negative means no rain again positive means rain negative means no rain again positive is rain negative is no rain that is how it works so on the horizontal axis on the left hand side here we have predict so it always in the confusion matrix let's put its positive or its negative based on our prediction so what is the prediction here on the horizontal axis here it's horizontal axis here this is also horizontal so it travel travels is like horizontally here horizontally here negative right so positive right so positive means we'll just label it positive so we are identifying or predicting it to be positive because predicts axis is on this side for this left hand side table right so you, if you're clear with one side then how are you change switch axis or so whatever you do the confusion matrix will be super easy for you so here we are predicting it to be what positive here what we are doing we are predicting it to be again it's positive so we are just labeling it right here we are predicting it to be negative here we are predicting it to be negative so this is what a meteorological department is predicting that this will be positive this is positive this is negative this is negative right now what is actual scenario actually did it rain when you predicted it's positive it will rain did it actually rain yes positive actually it rained so now this axis here let's take the blue color again now this axis is vertical axis over here actual axis so now this vertical axis actual here yeah. so positive yeah it actually rained and we predicted it as positive so what happened now the prediction is true or correct so that is true positive right now when it comes here what did you predict the meteorological department predicted it's negative there's no rain but actually what happened it do, did rain it did rain right positive so our prediction was wrong incorrect so false so this is false negative now here the meteorological department predicted predict horizontal axis is positive yes it did predict that it will rain but what did happen actually it did not rain no so what is here now it's false positive false incorrect now the meteorological department said no it will not rain negative prediction was negative and what is actual condition it didn't rain in actual yeah so it's true that 
the prediction is true it's a true negative now you see it's super easy to understand this way that this is how the prediction works horizontally in this direction we have written prediction here and the actual was in the vertical direction like this so we wrote it over here so now it's, it's easy now if you switch the axis what will happen so as we have learned here just apply this you have to just write it once by yourselves so that it's very super clear for you prediction so what is the prediction over here now prediction comes as a vertical axis over here okay so i'm just putting yeah we have predicted it's positive it will rain we have predicted it's negative it's not rain it will not rain it will rain right so we're clear again let's take this darker color now the actual of whatever we are doing is on the horizontal axis here so when we predicted it will rain positive what it actually happened actually it did rain positive so it's true that it rained when we predicted it as positive that it will rain what did actually happen horizontally it didn't rain so false right now here when we predicted it as negative it will not rain what it the actual thing happened positive so now it's incorrect why right? it's false so false negative there is true negative so now i think it will be very clear how this confusion matrix is arrived at based on whatever we have at hand the problem whatever is positive for us we decide the confusion matrix design the confusion matrix and say this is how it works now we'll just go through the important formulas and outcomes that we get from this based on which we say our classification model is performing better is performing good whatever so first thing that comes is accuracy what is the accuracy of our model so how do you measure the accuracy so accuracy is nothing but the correct identification over here so the correct identification is what identifying it will rain positive as positive identifying it will not rain negative as negative so this is the two correct things over here right or same over here only the switching of axis is changing only the false positive and false negative okay so here so the correct identification is true positive and true negative so it will rain it will not rain you are identifying so true positive plus true negative divided by everything that is true positive plus true negative plus false positive plus false so all of this so this gives us the accuracy how much accurate we are in saying if it will rain it will rain it will not rain and it will not rain so that is accuracy okay now comes precision very important and now next will be a use case where which one to consider why it becomes important is the next question so precision precision is what now we have true positive right we identified it to rain and it did rain true positive divided by again true positive plus false positive so what does this say this tells us what is precision so false positive is nothing but we identified or we predicted that it will rain but it was incorrect so it did not rain if the false positive increases the more we say it will rain and it actually didn't rain then our precision goes down right so we have to increase this true positive our prediction and we have to decrease this false positive to have a higher precision so that's important for precision right so it's just the total cases how many true positives or how many incidents of rain am i predicting correctly out of the total incidences of positive prediction right so that is what is precision telling us now let me raise this and then let go to the next comes sensitivity or you can call it recall so precision and recall these are two important things it can be sensitivity or it can be called as a recall both are same now what is this this is again the same true positive divided by true positive plus this time around we are putting false negative 
so we are saying that it will not rain it will not rain but we are saying it's, it will not rain negative but that is incorrect it did rain so if the false negative increases then our sensitivity or recall reduces so this is another thing so in some of the classification problems sensitivity would, or recall would be important in some other problems precision would be important in some problems it would be accuracy or it would be both should be equally important either it is precision or recall it all depends on you, the problem you are dealing with the classification problem that you are dealing with so here the true positive so here what is the case this is false negative that means actually it did rain right we have said it will not rain actually it did rain so this is recall or sensitivity is nothing what the number of cases that we are identifying correctly out of the total positive cases out of the total rain cases so say in three uh, say in 365 days in a year we uh, it kind of rains for say 100 days so that is a positive 100 days it rains out of that 100 days we have predicted 99 so 99 percent accuracy so 99 uh, percent recall that means only one was coming as false negative out of 100 cases total one false negative all 99 were true positive so that is the kind of thing that we are getting out of recall so accuracy precision recall these are three important formulas that comes from or that is coming from the confusion matrix so hope the confusion matrix and these three important parameters are very clear with this now we have something known as f1 score so it's nothing but taking considering both precision and recall so two into precision i'm just mentioning as p into recall divided by precision plus recall so giving equal weightage to both precision and recall so that means we are saying our accuracy should be high and our precision and recall both should be balanced so we should have a high f1 score we are not giving any weightage to yeah precision is only important for me and not recall or recall is only important for me not precision now the last one we have is specificity so specificity this is measured based on true negative true negative divided by true negative plus false positive so the number of false positive that increases it reduces the specificity of the model of the uh, whatever algorithm or whatever you have designed to predict so the number of true negatives if it will not rain and you have said it will not rain that means it's true negative so you have predicted it as negative and it has been true so that is correct this is the case if that is high then the specificity will be high only when the fp false positive is low so that's a case of specificity and when this will be used mostly is will be going to precision where you will be improving or you will be looking at lower false positive rates and higher true positive rates so that will be higher on precision side but if false positive is important to you if you predict more false positives that will be a costly thing for you because you are saying you are it will rain when it is not rain right or it is a fraudulent transaction bank transaction or whatever transaction you it's, it's a fraudulent transaction when it is actually not a fraudulent transaction so if the specificity is less that means you're not identifying the negative side or the non-fraudulent side maybe those cases were actually genuine cases and you did not identify those genuine cases as genuine cases that means it's a problem in the system genuine cases identified as non-genuine case will be a big problem so that time the specificity will become an important parameter to analyze or to check for so these are all the formulas derived from confusion matrix so i think confusion matrix is super clear here how this labeling has come and how we are saying it's true positive and true negative we'll move to two use cases thank you for listening please subscribe and give your valuable comments